Hello, today we're going to learn about a modified Atwood machine, um, but this time we're going to have three masses. So take the time right now to pause the video and copy down this problem. Alright, so the first thing to notice is that mass 1 it has less mass than mass 2, which has less mass than mass 3. We're going to start off with a free body diagram. I'm going to redraw the table, mass 2 mass 1 and mass 3. The first thing that we should always draw is the weight vector. So we have M1G, M3G, and M2G. All right. Here are my pulleys. Now mass 1 is attached to a string, so we have the force of tension mass 3 is attached to a string, so we have a force of tension. Okay. Mass 2 is being pulled by a string, so we have a force of tension on both sides. Last but not least, we know that mass 2 is on top of a table, so we are going to have to include a normal force. So that's a free body diagram for this problem. Next, I'm going to create the net force equation okay, for both the x and the y axes. So in order to do that, what I want to start off with is to pivot the hanging masses so that they are all on the same, or the string is going in a straight line, like so. So we know that the weight of mass 1 is going to go to the left. Um, it is hung by a string and that is being pulled like so. This is the normal force. This is M2G. Um, this string is pulling to the right this string is pulling mass 3 to the left and we have uh, M3G right there. Okay, So all I did was I pivoted mass 1 and mass 3 and I swung them up so that the pulley and the line would all be straight. Now when you do that you make it so that the motion is all along one axis and in this scenario that axis is the x-axis. Okay. So from there, let's create our net force in the x-direction equation. We have m1g is pointing to the left, so I'm going to make that negative, positive ft, negative ft, positive ft, negative ft, and positive m3g. Um, and that easily simplifies to, because these all cancel out, okay. so that would be my net force equation. The net force equation for the y-axis, we do the same thing. We start off with sigma Fy, and we take a look at all the forces that are along the y-axis, and that will be positive, normal force minus the gravitational force of mass 2. Notice how I did not include the weight of M1 and M3, even though before they were hanging down, when we pivoted the masses, um, the direction of the weight also had to change as well. Alrighty? Now, from there, we can calculate the acceleration of the masses. Right. So, calculate the acceleration. Now, if I take a look at this, I know that M2 is going to be accelerating to the left or to the right um, because M3 is going to drag the entire system. Um, and so, because this is moving to the right, that's where the velocity is headed. Um, also, that's where the acceleration is headed. Therefore, I'm going to use my 
x net force equation, negative m1g plus m3g. Okay, so from there, we know that this is the uh, sum of all the forces in the x direction uh, is equal to mass times acceleration according to Newton's second law. So we have to take a look at how many masses there are, and I see one, two, and three. So we need to include all of those masses, m1 plus m2 plus m3 times acceleration, according to Newton's second law, is equal to negative m1g plus m3g. Now, in order to find acceleration, we have this entire factor that we can divide by. So we have acceleration is equal to m1g plus m3g all over m1 plus m2 plus m3. And this is, of course, along the x-axis. Okay. Now, if we wanted to do the same thing but for the y-axis, we will have to use the net force in the y-axis equation. So we have f of n minus m2g. Uh, same process, force is equal to the mass times acceleration. And we have mass 1, mass 2, and mass 3 times the acceleration is equal to the normal force minus m2g. Okay. Uh, now, if we think about this, this m2, this mass, isn't moving along the y-axis. Therefore, there is no acceleration in the y-axis. Therefore, we can say that the acceleration is zero. Now, if you do make the acceleration zero, we can easily find out what the normal force is. So if I plug in zero for the acceleration, zero times m1, zero times m2, zero times m3, this entire side becomes zero. It's equal to normal force minus m2g. And for this scenario, uh, we find out that the normal force is equal to m2g. In this given scenario, I asked, determine m1. Now, I didn't give you any numbers, so determining m1, we'll have to use all of the variables in the variable form. Um, we cannot use the x, or we cannot use the y equation because acceleration is equal to zero in the y, and when we multiply zero by everything, everything just cancels out. So we are going to use the x equation once more. We have negative m1g plus m3g, m1 plus m2 plus m3, m1g plus m3g. Uh, to find out what m1 equals, I'm going to divide both sides by the acceleration. Okay. So we have m1 plus m2 plus m3 is equal to negative m1g plus m3g divided by the acceleration. And I'm going to subtract m2 and m3 from both sides. If I do that, I have m1 is equal to negative m1g plus m3g minus m2, minus m3. Now, in a word problem or in a real life scenario, um, you would know what m3 is or m2 is or m3 is, and you should be able to calculate the acceleration, therefore giving you the value of m1. And that's that.